little bit about that. Sure. Um, so that was uh, my family, all of us, uh, those are my kids, and they're into uh, films as well. And so we, uh, we just wanted to do something where we could include our kids because um, our scripts are very heavy and, uh, you know, not really suitable for children. Mm-hmm. So we wanted to do a project where our kids could get involved and, and be part of that process and kind of see how it all works and how it all comes together. Um, so that's why we decided to um, make that film. And it's actually um, it's actually done pretty well in the festival circuit um, also. And so we're, we're hoping that it will uh, continue to do well and it, it was just a really fun experience to do with uh, with our kids. It, it really sounds like it. It's a great way for a family to come together. Now, with some of the life experiences, what you had, maybe you can give like, you know, one life experience like in a movie, like in Phantom, also in Black Sheep, Last Night, and also I think you have um, Skew Blue, maybe like, you know, one experience you had in the Army that ties in to one of the movies. Sure. Um, so in Skew Blue, um, there's a, a part when uh, the female combat medic, um, she is basically trying to make it through basic training. And, um, you know, she's, she's doing fine, you know, managing. And, and then she manages to break her foot during the last major build exercise of, the, of basic training. And, and she... Um, basically has to do this ruck march uh, like 20 miles and with a broken foot and Mm. um, you know she and that's based on you know that's based on my own experiences because that happened to me and uh, people I've I've had people read the script and they're like that's just not believable and I I kind of chuckle at that because it's it's true because I lived it uh, and I know it sounds unbelievable, and they, they have a hard time believing that because they're like, what would be your motivation for doing that? But basically, it's like the end of basic training, and uh, if you don't finish that event, like, you got to start all over, and I wasn't going to do that. So <laughs> I just kind of um, dealt with it and, and made it through. It was very, very hard. It's probably one of the hardest things um, that I've done, and I just... I don't know. I was just motivated to get done with basic training. So, <laughs> I, I think that sounds very interesting too. And in teaching people that you don't give up, you know, based on your experience, you know, you know, people what they always say they tend to question, especially those with PTSD, whether it's true or not. But I think you give a really good account, and maybe another experience I had in one of your other films as well. And I think we cover Black Sheep, if I'm right, maybe like in Skew Blue and. Um, Lone Wolf and Phantom. I think there's also maybe a few more you could also um, get to talk about uh, how they're tied into the films with your life experience. Sure, sure. Um, so in um, Black Sheep, there, um, you know, the part where a soldier is basically threatening um, the medic who's trying to save the EOD tech because he feels that uh, the EOD tech is beyond saving and the medic decides that he disagrees and so he stays put and continues to aid uh, the EOD tech um, and the superior officer of this soldier threatens to shoot him but the medic will not budge and he just stays put and I thought I've, I've dealt with superior officers that made light of you know, how dangerous deployment is and um, basically, you know, saying that, oh, well, we're deploying and, you know, you've got all these really young kids that are, you know, scared to death and, um, you know, the superior officer saying, oh, well, you know, half of you will die, but that's less people. I got to stand in line behind at the PX, which is basically like a military supermarket. Um, And that's not the way to motivate troops. Um, you know, there's a difference between being in charge and being a leader. Mm-hmm. And so I just tried to make um, that evident and showing that, you know, um, leadership is not something that is necessarily there for people that are in charge. Mm-hmm. 
That that is a really good point too. And of course, you were talking about uh, being in deployment, how dangerous it is. What do you consider your uh, your your experience with uh, death, like you know, a near death experience? What do you consider? We're already a point where we're in your most dangerous situation. Well, um, I don't, I don't have like great stories. Like, uh, you know, they're not anything compared to other people's experiences. Uh, when I got injured in the military, uh, I broke like my whole lower half and. Um, so trying to come back from that and, and trying to overcome those injuries, like I'm, I'm still dealing with those injuries now, even, you know, 10 years later, I'm still dealing with all of that. And, you know, sometimes it is a very hard struggle to, to do that because you, you know, you are in just constant pain all the time and you're trying to take care of your family. You're trying to, you know, make films, work a full-time job, you know, get your degree, whatever the case is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it can be extremely difficult, but um, you just have to find something to hold on to. And that's my that's my biggest recommendation to anyone dealing with PTSD or any kind of disability. And even if, you know, they feel like they're alone, they're not. Because um, even if they don't have necessarily a, a family or a great support system, you know, there are tons of other, you know, disabled people out there that you know are going through the same thing and so if they can find a way to reach out to those people um and then you know that way they can find someone who understands what they're going through Mm -hmm. um, i think that would be very helpful to them It, it sounds like you've got something going as well too besides with those films as well too what are some of your upcoming projects and what do you have going on right now in terms of films um, so I, we're trying to um, decide on what our next uh, filming project is going to be as far as our short film. We may uh, do a short film based on uh, one of my husband Dallas's scripts. Um, so we may do a short film of his. I just finished um, writing another script called Rebel Tides, and um, it's doing it's doing pretty well so far in the festival circuit. And uh, I it's a dystopian modern warfare meets medieval kind of story but it's really about brotherhood and uh, you know the freedom from oppression is really what it is about Mm -hmm. Um, and it'll be uh, published and available on Amazon um, on the 15th of February Um, and then I've got a couple more scripts that I'm writing right now uh, but we'll probably start uh, filming something again soon and of course, you know, we're trying to get black sheep out there and, and trying to hopefully, you know, hopefully it'll win in some places and then we can donate, you know, those funds to the Gary Sinise Foundation. Mm-hmm. And where can we see your movies at? So all of our movies, uh, all of our films that we've done so far are available on our YouTube channel uh, at Mad Cody Films. And then they can also be found on our website, which is madcodyfilms.com. Um, and there's links in there to all of our different videos in our YouTube channel, as well as our Facebook page and our Twitter page and our Instagram pages also. It sounds like you got a lot going on as well, too, and I'm very motivated to um, take a look. What do you consider your most favorite project of all the uh, films you've done? And, of course, besides you've already talked about your challenges and your most memorable moments, what do you consider your favorite project? So the, my favorite project as far as filming goes so far is definitely done. Uh, it's definitely been Black Sheep. Our actors were just so absolutely amazing. Um, they came together and they just, they were the best. They, they came and uh, they just gave it 110% and they really brought the script to life and it was just, really great watching them uh, bring that together and bring it to life. And um, they were just so fun to work with. Um, So I really think that's my um, favorite project so far that we've been working on. That sounds sounds amazing, too. And uh, who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Uh. 
No, I I really don't know. Um, I really just, I'm motivated by um, a lot of different things and a lot of different um, people, I guess. I guess my kids um, are one of my hugest motivations uh, because they, uh, I've always had a love for doing this, but always felt like it was kind of out of reach and uh, because trying to break into this industry and this market is so difficult. And so I always felt a little uh, down on myself, like maybe, you know, it's not really possible. But my kids are the motivation to keep going and to keep pushing and to try to get these stories out there so that I can help people and raise money for charities and show them that, you know, if you will put in the hard work and the dedication and remember, you know, where you came from and what you're trying to do by doing this, then, you know, you can succeed. And what do you consider your best advice when it comes to getting into filmmaking? Uh, the best advice I can give anybody who wants to get into filmmaking is just get out there and do it. It doesn't matter what kind of equipment you have or, you know, who you, who you have to work with you or not. Uh, just getting out there and doing it because on every single project you learn so much from, you know, the mistakes that you make and things that you come across because being a director, your things are constantly coming up and getting in the way. And so being a director is part of being really good at that is being able to, able to overcome those obstacles and being able to adapt to the situation. And, um, you know, the best advice I can give to people is just be kind and supportive of everybody that you meet because supporting another's success won't ever dampen yours. Mm -hmm. That sounds amazing, too. And before we let you go, we know you're very busy. Um, tell us once again, uh, where can we find your films and where can um, people help for those with PTSD and where can people donate and where to get help and also um, give everybody your website and how can people reach you if they have any questions? Absolutely. So um, you can find us on uh, Twitter at Mad Cody Films. Uh, find us on Facebook at Mad Cody Films. Our website, madcodyfilms.com. Uh, our Instagram is the Mad Cody Films. And then we've also got, I've got a Twitter page uh, at Crow Gibson. My personal email is crowgibson at gmail.com. And I'll be happy to um, answer anybody's email. So they're always welcome to send me an email and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Um, they're also welcome to reach out to me on Facebook. My Facebook is uh, at Crow Gibson, um, and as well as my Twitter is also at Crow Gibson. Uh, and you can reach out to the Gary Sinise Foundation, um, as well as the Chris Kyle Frog Foundation. Uh, there are tons of other charities out there. There's Veterans of Foreign Wars, um, and the VA is always available too. Uh, they have, you know. 24-hour hotlines for, you know, anybody who's feeling like they can't go on and feel like harming themselves. The VA has a 24-hour hotline for that. Um, and definitely, you know, if you're needing help, reach out to somebody because there is somebody in your life that cares about you and you can overcome this and, and make a difference. And let's see how we can help you get over this um, and, and move forward with your life. So definitely, uh, and you can find us all also on our YouTube channel, uh, which is at Mad Cody Films, and um, all of our all of our emails and everything, as well as all of our other social media pages. You can find them on our website, which is MadCodyFilms.com. There's links in there to um, everything, and there's also you can also email us directly from our website. So if you want to get in touch with us, just Shoot us an email and we'll get back to you. That sounds amazing. And I have to say one thing. You've been a huge inspiration, Crow, and making everybody aware of all, all the challenges and struggles and everything. You're making light of it. You've got some excellent work. And, Crow, just want to say thank you very much for being on our program. Look forward to having you on again soon. And uh, keep this up to date with all your projects. And um, I just want to say you are one very courageous person who I've talked to. You've been the best. I really appreciate your time, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. You've been listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios at themikewagnershow.com. 
Visit sonicwebstudio.com today.